Hello and welcome to Faithfully Stampin' with Jennifer Helm. I am Jennifer Helm, the faithful stamper and independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And today I have for you a fun fold pocket card. This is a very simple card. Might look ordinary, your usual card style when you first take a look, but when you lift the front, it's got a split panel in the front and a little pocket where you can put a sentiment card. This is an idea that I saw on a demonstrator website. It was actually from a German demonstrator by the name of Carolyn Stetter, which I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. She did a video, but it was all in German, so I couldn't really watch and see what she did. But she said that she was inspired by Karen Titus, who is a demonstrator here in the US. So I took a look at the card that Carolyn showed and then figured out how to do this. So I wanted to share it with you tonight because this is a great idea. You can use it just as the simple card with a little pocket for the sentiment, but you can also use it to put a gift card in if you like. Um, it, it's the perfect size for a gift card, and you could very easily fit a gift card in here as well. So I will go ahead and show you how to make this card. It's very simple, not a lot of supplies needed, and not a lot of cutting and scoring either. So the first thing you are going to need is a piece of cardstock that is four and a quarter inches by 11. So this is crumb cake. So you definitely need the long skinny card base for this particular card. So bring over your paper trimmer scorer. And the first thing we are going to do is score the cardstock in half on the 11 inch side. So at five and a half, we're gonna score it. Next what I do is I go ahead and I fold the card base in half because sometimes when I fold my card stock in half, one side is just a little bit longer than the other. So I always check front and back. Sometimes it doesn't matter, it's spot on for this one. There's a little bit of overhang, so I definitely want that on the front. So I'm gonna flip it over so this is the back. I'm gonna unfold it because I want to, I'm going to be cutting on this top portion here. And so what I'm going to do is take my cardstock. So that top front panel of my card is going to be here. And I'm going to line it up at the one and three quarter inch mark on my paper trimmer. Now I'm going to move my paper cutting blade up to the top. That's the dark one. We have scoring and cutting here. So make sure you've got your cutting blade, but when you go to cut, we're only cutting down to the five and a half inch mark. So where that score line is, you're not going all the way through. Otherwise, you're going to have two really interesting cards. And so when you take your paper trimmer and move it out of the way, your card is going to look like this with two panels for that make up the front of the card. So next, you will need a piece of designer series paper that is one and a half inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall. And this is going to go on the small panel. So we're just gonna go ahead and glue that right on. If you need any designer series paper or cardstock, be sure to check out my website here at the faithful stamper .net. If you do not currently have a demonstrator you are working with, I'd be happy to send you catalogs. Just let me know. Reach out to me in the comments or hop on over to Facebook and find me at the faithful stamper. And this card idea is great because it's a great way to use up strips of designer series paper. You can actually make a whole bunch of these cards with a single sheet because you're only using a one and a half inch wide strip. So you could use this card for any occasion. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and do some stamping. The stamp set that I am using today is the Peaceful Deer. This is a photopolymer set, so it's clear. You can see through the stamps. So what I'm going to need is my stamp and pierce mat. And I'm going to flip my card open, so I'm just gonna work on this little panel here. I'm going to stamp tone on tone, so I'm going to use crumb cake ink on my crumb cake cardstock. And first of all, I'm gonna take my large evergreen stamp 
from the set. I love photopolymer because you can see through it. You can see if it if you've got ink um, equally all over your stamp. For example, here I can see I missed a little spot at the bottom. So all I need to do is take it back to the ink pad, tap, 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 take another look, and it looks good. One thing to remember, no matter what kind of stamps you're stamping with, is don't smush your stamp down into the ink pad. No CPR, no chest compressions on your stamp. Tap, 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 a light one, two, three press on your cardstock, and you are ready to move on. So, my evergreen tree is lovely, but it needs some friends. So I have this beautiful little snowflake sparkle sploosh stamp, as I call it. It's probably got some technical term it's stamping up, but. I love little stamps like this that are great fillers. So I am just going to take this stamp and cover my card front here with my little splooshes and snowflakes. What I love about this is it doesn't scream Christmas, so you could take this in any color and put it on like a birthday card as a background or accent stamp. So I really just love it. So there's the front of the card. Now I'm gonna flip it open, and I wanna accent a little bit here. You can leave the inside plain, but I'm gonna add just a couple little accent stamps. I have a smaller set of evergreen trees, so I'm kinda gonna echo that design on the front and put this small grouping of trees at the bottom. And then I'm going to take that snowflake stamp and just put one little swoosh at the top. While I'm on a stamping roll, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the inside of my card. So for the inside of your card, your little sentiment card to put in the pocket, you're going to want a piece of basic white that is three inches wide by four and a half inches tall. And I'm going to take some evening evergreen ink. This is a beautiful color for holiday cards. And take my sentiment and stamp it there sort of in the middle this card is nice because you have a little room to write not a ton but not too small sometimes depending on your card design you have a teeny tiny area this one's kind of run of the mill uh, kind of middle of the road I guess I should say so there's my sentiment in the evening evergreen I'm going to add a sweet little bunny stamp to the bottom one thing to keep in mind when you are working on the inside of your card is that you're going to have some hidden behind the pocket and so you might want to watch um, what you use here. I really wanted to use one of the deers but the way the stamp would have worked his rear end would have been seen and his head would have been behind the pocket so I didn't want to do that. So just keep that in mind. One last time with my little snowflake swish up there at the top and there's the inside panel for my card so I'm going to set that aside and for the final touch on the front I have one of our stitched rectangles this is approximately two and a quarter inches wide by three and a half inches tall so you can experiment with sizes but this is what I decided to go with for the front of my card so I'm going to pick a different sentiment from the set, Sending Love and Peace This Season, and just stamp that in the Evening Evergreen. Close up my ink pads. And now I'm ready to show you how to assemble the card. So like I said, not a lot of stamping, not a lot of decorating, not a lot of cutting and scoring. So we have our card here with the two panels. And what we're going to do next is you're gonna need a little tear and tape. Now this is Stampin' Up's tear and tape. It's a quarter of an inch wide. I would not go any wider than this. If you have narrow at home, like an eighth of an inch, it works great, but definitely don't go any wider. If you only have wide at home, cut it down a little bit. So we're gonna wanna put a piece right here above the score line. And basically what we're doing is we're just securing this pocket. And so my favorite trick with tear and tape is to take a block with a straight edge and use it to help pull my tape. That way I get a clean cut on my tape. I don't have ragged edges. I just love it. It's one of my favorite tips and I learned it recently so I want the whole world to know about it. Now you want one more piece here and this is where you want it to be narrow. If you were using a really wide tape, it wouldn't, you'd lose a lot of your pocket. 
So just keep that in mind. So give that a good press down. I'm gonna go ahead and peel the edges off. And then just fold your card shut. And give it a press. And now you can take your little sentiment card and slip it right there in the pocket. And if you had a gift card, which I did have a gift card and it has wandered off my table, you could slip it right in there too. So it's a perfect dual purpose card, card and gift card holder in one. So all I need to do is decorate the front of my card. Actually, I forgot one little bit of stamping. Don't forget your envelopes. I am not a fan of naked envelopes. I like my envelopes to have either a small stamped image or have a flap of designer series paper or maybe embossed flap. So there's my little stamp of trees for my envelope. Sorry, I forgot to do that a moment ago. So now I'm going to take this stitched rectangle and put it on the front of my card. Now, here's the important tip. Watch your dimensional placement. I feel like I have certain phrases that I say a lot and this is one of them. Because you wanna to stick to having your dimensionals on the left-hand side of the back of your sentiment piece. If you accidentally put dimensionals all over the back, which is something I did this morning, when you go to put it on your card front, you will glue your card front shut. Now, in this case, if you were to do that, it would just mean that both panels would open at the same time if you hadn't already glued your pocket down. So, just word to the wise, watch your dimensionals, keep them on the left half of your sentiment piece. And you're not stuck with rectangles. You can use squares, ovals, whatever shape you like. So, experiment, have fun. Now, a little decoration. I have pre-punched a deer out of our dazzling paper, which is part of our celebration offering if you're watching in 2021. And so I've got my little deer punch. And I'm going to take some mini dimensionals. I love that we have two sizes because sometimes you just need smaller ones for whatever you might be gluing to your card front. And these mini ones work perfectly for the deer gonna go ahead and take the backing off here and then once that is done I'm going to place the deer here on the front I decided to put him a little angled so it kind of looks like he's dancing it is Christmas time after all or at least on the card it is and this is cute but I thought he needed a little something so I'm just gonna give him a little decoration a little bow so I'm tying a bow on the end of my ribbon spool. Tying bows is not my strong suit. I try. That one actually came out pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and trim my edges. And what I like to do with little bows like this is I use a glue dot to attach it. And I unroll my glue dot roll. And I'm gonna put my bow right on there. Just press it right onto the glue dot. And then I can pick the whole thing up, glue dot, bow and all, and then put that on the card right where I want it. So there's my happy little deer dancing away. And I've got the perfect Christmas card and if I want gift card holder. So that is our simple fun fold card for tonight. I do have other samples to show you. So I started with the Christmas card. We're going to go a little bit backwards and go into Halloween. So Halloween is coming. It's September. If you're watching this video when I post it on the YouTube channel. So this is from our Crazy Cats stamp set. And you can see here I used layered squares. And I also used two panels of designer series paper. Instead of stamping on half and using designer series paper on the other half, I used designer series paper on both. And so here is the little sentiment for the inside. Have a perfect Halloween. I love this little cat hiding in the box here. I did not stamp anything along the edges here. I could have if I wanted, I chose not to. But I wanted to show you how this little guy, his tail is hanging over the edge. I'll do this so you can see it. What I did was I stamped once on this white stitch square, 
and then I stamped again on a separate scrap of paper and then I cut him out. I fussy cut him with my scissors so that I could layer him on top and that way his tail is hanging down over the front of the card. So I love that and I also love this little peekaboo cat here. That's another stamp in the set. So there is one other option for you. Since I was on a Halloween kick, I put together these two cards. Now this is the same layout. The only difference is I positioned the pieces a little bit different. So this is orange, this is white, all pulling in together colors from the designer series paper. And then I was debating what I wanted to cover or leave uncovered, which is why I experimented with a different placement on my sentiment. And then inside this card, I have You're So Sweet It's Scary. So this would be a great card to give to a special someone with a little sweet treat for Halloween. And of course, matching witch stamp on the envelope. Now one other idea to show you, one last Halloween card. So here is another one in the vertical layout. This one I used a spiderweb die for an accent and my little sentiment here. I layered two pieces of cardstock together for my sentiment card. So the original measurements, those four and a half by three, I did it in the basic black cardstock. And then I just took a quarter inch off, actually I think it's an eighth of an inch, and cut the white panel and then did my stamping there. So I kind of like the different look. And I'll show you one more example of this in a minute. And a really fun little tip for you, we have a stamp set currently called Classic Cloche. If you've ever seen a cloche, it's one of those glass domes that you can put over cupcakes or something decorative to display at your house. So we have a stamp set with that and a matching die cut. And I saw another demonstrator post an idea using the cloche as a ghost. It's perfect, I love it. All I had to do was when I used the die cut to cut out the shape, I cut the little knob off the top and you can't even tell it wasn't originally meant to be a ghost. Incidentally, this also is a great wedding bell shape. You could put two of them together, put bows on the top, and you've got a, just about an instant wedding card. So lots of great ideas you can do with a simple stamp. But I wanted to show you a clever idea to make a ghost. And as I mentioned, this is in the vertical orientation, just like I showed you how to make. But you're not tied to this. You can also make the card in a vertical, I'm sorry, a horizontal orientation, where it opens from the side. There's my gift card. I knew it was hiding somewhere. I wanted to show you again, this is another layered sentiment card, and I used one of the die cuts from the Frightfully Cute die set, and it takes, it cuts out these little stars, and when you pop the white panel on top of the black, it really shows through, so I just thought that was a neat idea I wanted to share. But you can see how the gift card would be tucked right into the pocket. And I did reverse the cutting directions on this card. So remember when we cut this card and we cut from the top, we cut it one and a half inches. For this one, if you'd like the larger panel to be on the top, you just wanna cut your panel the same way, but cut it at two and a half inches instead. So you have either option. You could definitely cut it the same and have the small panel on the top, but I preferred it with the larger one. So just another idea for you. I like you to have options. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching my video with a simple fun fold pocket card, which could also double as a gift card holder. I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel and come back and watch whenever I post crafting videos, which is typically about twice a week. You can also follow me on Facebook as The Faithful Stamper. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and happy crafting.